Welcome to the Know It All for the week of May 8th. I'm Meg Turney, and this week we've got even more Mortal Kombat drama, a new portal game, and Rockstar finally clarifying their stance on mods. Let's start things off with video game news. There was so much drama happening in the world of video games this week, starting with a Mortal Kombat 10 patch that was supposed to help, but all it did was hurt. The PC version of the game has been lagging behind its console brethren, which is a crime unto itself, and NetherRealms attempted to bring it up to speed this week, but the fix ended up deleting the progress of those who downloaded it. There's like only one thing a patch can't do, and that's it. The patch was quickly pulled, but the loss of progress was permanent. Ouch. Here's hoping NetherRealm and those gamers who were affected kiss and make up, and then one of them expands until they explode, because hey, it is Mortal Kombat after all. Moving right along from one deletion to another, last week we covered the removal of PT from the PSN and how some people were attempting to cash in on the teaser's disappearance by listing PS4s preloaded with the game on eBay for way more than they're worth. Well, eBay has dropped the hammer on that practice, citing copyright rules that prevent software from being listed on the auction site and started pulling down offending auctions. That's what you get when you try to cash in on Tragedy Kids. Valve, who's been recently in the doghouse with gamers over that whole paid mods fiasco, announced a new portal game this week. And by portal game, I mean a new portal novelty pinball table. Sadly, I'm not kidding. The table is for Pinball FX2, a free to download game where instead of paying for the game, you pay for the tables you want to play. And while it does look kinda neat, admittedly, this is clearly not what Portal fans are hoping for. How a company that just couldn't seem to miss with gamers has devolved into novelty pinball tables and getting downvoted into oblivion on Reddit, I will never know. But Lord Gaben, you need only announce a third installment in any of your blockbuster franchises to make us all love you again. Moving right along, things got a little shady on the web on Wednesday when Green Man Gaming posted a listing for the upcoming Witcher 3 Wild Hunt on PC for just $35 instead of the standard $60. Now that's a pretty sweet deal considering the game isn't even out yet, but that was before CD Projekt Red's business development manager posted in the company's forums that he wasn't sure where GMG was getting those keys because CDPR had passed on selling the many. The CEO of GMG fired back, insisting that the codes were legit and even accused CD Projekt Red of putting business before gamers. Probably not a good way to get back on a developer's good side. Anyway, now the deal's gone, so the real losers are our wallets. This week, Nintendo released an apology for the scarce nature of their popular amiibo figurines and promised to be better about communicating when and where collectors could find them in the future. Now, among other things, the gaming giant promised to bring back some amiibo which haven't been on store shelves for some time, so get your wallets ready, kids. That's not all that's going on in the world of Mario. Nintendo also announced plans to get into the theme park business in conjunction with Universal Studios. Heck yeah. It's all in the very early development stages I know right now, but let me just put this out there because I'm dead serious. If there's not a Pokemon Snap ride, I will riot. Speaking of riots, see how I did that? Gamers were beyond fizz when Rockstar started handing out bans for the use of mods in GTA V single player. Mods were previously thought to be totally fine as long as they were only utilized in single player, but oh how wrong that theory proved to be. Well, at least that's what the internet angry mob thought. People got pretty up in arms, and to be honest, for, you know, a good reason. But now Rockstar has clarified their stance on mods, and they're not so evil. They said, quote, recent updates to GTA V PC had an unintended effect of making unplayable certain single player modifications. This was not intentional. No one has been banned for using single player modifications, and you should not worry about being banned or being relegated to the cheater pool just for using single player PC mods. Our primary focus is on protecting GTA Online against modifications that could give players an unfair advantage, disrupt gameplay, or cause griefing. So hey, they're not actually actively out there trying to shut down mods just so long as you're not using them to cheat in GTA Online. Back to the car guns, guys. It's time to get ridiculous. That's all for video game news, but for a full hour of video game news and discussion, check out this week's episode of The Patch, where Gus, Ashley, and I discuss TV adaptations of our favorite games, and whether or not we're excited to get Oculus Rift when it hits shelves in Q1 of next year. Spoiler alert, we're not. On this week's episode of The Patch Video Game Book Club, which is what I'm calling it now, Bernie, Gus, Ashley, and I played Don't Starve Together. Bernie kept Ashley alive, and I made Gus super nervous by starting small forest fires. They weren't hurting anybody. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> if esports are more your speed, this week on the leaderboard, we talked about Valve's lofty goals for the International Prize Bowl and whether or not we think it's fair. All right, enough video game news. Now, before we call it a day, we're going to make a quick stop in a galaxy far, far away for a ton of Star Wars movie news. This week was a big one for Star Wars fans. Not only was it May the 4th be with you and Revenge of the 5th, Vanity Fair also brought all sorts of exclusive coverage to the table by giving fans a sneak peek at their upcoming Star Wars issue. 
In a pictorial shot by celebrity photographer Annie Leibovitz, we got a chance to see the film's villain, Kylo Ren, without his awesome mask. And surprise, he's being played by the foxy Adam Driver of HBO's Girls. We also got confirmation that Game of Thrones' Gwendolyn Christie will play Captain Phasma, the chromed out trooper, and that Linda Pete and Yango's character, Maz Kanata, is a space pirate and will be entirely CG. You know, I probably butchered those names like they were young Padawan, and I'm okay with it. There's a ton more news from the Vanity Fair piece in the full update, so if you're interested, give it a watch. Now, what would a roundup of Star Wars news be without a juicy rumor? Really boring, actually, is what it would be. This week's tidbit involves one of the galaxy's most badass figures, as rumors swirled that Boba Fett would be the focus of the second Star Wars anthology film. The film was previously being directed by Josh Trank, but he recently stepped away from the project to pursue original properties. Well, at least that's what he said. The rap reports that Disney actually pushed him off the project after he displayed what was described as erratic behavior on the set of Fantastic Four. Please, someone figure out what that is, because I am so curious. Now, we got a decidedly not not so great look at Boba Fett's origin in episode 2, so the general consensus seems to be that this film will focus on Fett's early days as a bounty hunter, and I may be being naive here, but that sounds pretty awesome to me. Alright, that's it for this week's episode of The Know-It-All. Don't forget, you can get more great Rooster Teeth content by checking out the RT Podcast on Monday, the Patch on Wednesday, and the Patch Video Game Book Club immediately after. Have a great weekend, everyone. Heart you!